Brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. White Phosphorus Munitions White phosphorus is a material made from a common allotrope of the chemical element phosphorus that is used in smoke, tracer, illumination, and incendiary munitions. Other common names include WP and the slang term Willy Pete or Willy Peter, derived from William Peter. The World War II phonetic alphabet for WP, which is dated from its use in World War II and Vietnam and is still sometimes used in military jargon as an incendiary weapon. White phosphorus is pyrophoric, burns fiercely and can ignite cloth, fuel, ammunition, and other combustibles. In addition to its offensive capabilities, white phosphorus is a highly efficient smoke-producing agent, which burns quickly and produces an immediate blanket of smoke. As a result, Smoke-producing white phosphorus munitions are very common, particularly as smoke grenades for infantry, loaded in grenade launchers on tanks and other armored vehicles, or as part of the ammunition allotment for artillery and mortars. These create smoke screens to mask from the enemy movement, position, infrared signatures, or the origin of fire. History White phosphorus is believed to have been first used by Fenian arsonists in the 19th century in the form of a solution in carbon disulfide. When the carbon disulfide evaporated, the phosphorus would burst into flames. This mixture was known as Fenian fire and allegedly was used by disgruntled itinerant workers in Australia to cause delayed destruction of shabby sleeping quarters. In 1916, during an intense struggle over conscription for the First World War, 12 members of the Industrial Workers of the World, a workers' union opposed to conscription, were arrested and convicted for using a plotting to use incendiary materials, including phosphorus. It is believed that eight or nine men in this group, known as the Sydney Twelve, had been framed by the police. Most were released in 1920 after an inquiry. World War I, the interwar period and World War II The British Army introduced the first factory-built WP grenades in late 1916. During World War I, white phosphorus mortar bombs, shells, rockets, and grenades were used extensively by American, Commonwealth, and, to a lesser extent, Japanese forces, in both smoke-generating and anti-personnel roles. The British military also used white phosphorus bombs against Kurdish villagers and Al-Habriya in Al-Anbar province during the Great Iraqi Revolution of 1920. In the interwar years, the U.S. Army trained using white phosphorus by artillery shell and air bombardment. In 1940, when the invasion of Britain seemed imminent, the phosphorus firm of Albright and Wilson suggested that the British government use a material similar to Fenian fire in several expedient incendiary weapons. The only one fielded was the grenade. No. 76 a special incendiary phosphorus grenade, which consisted of a glass bottle filled with a mixture similar to Fenian fire, plus some latex. It came in two versions, one with a red cap intended to be thrown by hand, and a slightly stronger bottle with a green cap intended to be launched from the north over projector. These were improvised anti-tank weapons hastily fielded in 1940, when the British were awaiting a German invasion after losing the bulk of their modern armaments. In the Dunkirk evacuation, instructions on each crate of SIP grenades included the observations, among other things, store bombs in cool places, underwater if possible. Stringent precautions must be taken to avoid cracking bombs during handling. At the start of the Normandy campaign, 
20% of American 81mm mortar rounds were white phosphorus. At least five American Medal of Honor citations mention the recipients using white phosphorus grenades to clear enemy positions, and in the 1944 liberation of Cherbourg alone, a single U.S. Mortar Battalion, the 87th, fired 11,899 white phosphorus rounds into the city. The U.S. Army and Marines used white phosphorus shells in 107 mm mortars. White phosphorus was widely credited by Allied soldiers for breaking up German infantry attacks and creating havoc among enemy troop concentrations during the latter part of the war. U.S. Sherman tanks carried a white phosphorus round intended for artillery spotting, but tank crews found it useful against German tanks, unable to penetrate German Panther and Tiger tanks at long range. The phosphorus round would adhere to the tank, generate smoke, blind the optics, and often force the crew to abandon the tank or allow U.S. tanks to close to a range where their armor-piercing rounds were effective. When American bombers raided Negros Island in the Philippines in 1945, there was a Japanese artillery use of phosphorus bombs during the air raid. Incendiary bombs were used extensively by both the Axis and Allied air forces against civilian populations and targets of military significance in civilian areas, including Chongqing, London, Coventry, Hamburg, Dresden, and Tokyo. Late in the war, some of these bombs used white phosphorus in place of magnesium as the igniter for their flammable mixtures. The use of incendiary weapons against civilians was banned by signatory countries in the 1980 Convention on Certain Conventional Weapons Protocol 3. The United States signed Protocols I and II on 24 March 1995 under the Clinton administration, and later Protocols III, IV, and V on 21 January 2009 under the Obama administration. Later Uses White phosphorus munitions were used extensively in Korea, Vietnam and later by Russian forces in Chechnya. White phosphorus grenades were used in Vietnam for destroying Viet Cong tunnel complexes as they would burn up all oxygen and suffocate the enemy soldiers sheltering inside. British soldiers also made extensive use of phosphorus grenades during the Falklands conflict to destroy Argentine positions as the peaty soil they were constructed from tended to lessen the impact of fragmentation grenades according to globalsecurity.org. During the December 1994 battle for Grozny in Chechnya, every fourth or fifth Russian artillery or mortar round fired was a smoke or white phosphorus round. Use in Iraq, 1988 White phosphorus was used by Saddam Hussein during the Halabya poison gas attack, according to an undated Answer article quoted by Enri Documentary on the morning of March 16, 1988. The Iraqi Air Force bombed Halabya several times with a chemical cocktail of Iparite, Tabin, VX, Napalm, and white phosphorus. White phosphorus had not been previously mentioned in other reports on Halabia, but the use of napalm was commonly reported. Use in Iraq 2004 In April 2004, during the First Battle of Fallujah, Darren Mortensen of California's North County Times reported that white phosphorus was used as an incendiary weapon, embedded with the 2nd Battalion, 1st Marine Regiment. Mortensen described a Marine mortar team using a mixture of white phosphorus and high explosives to shell a cluster of buildings where insurgents had been spotted throughout the week. 
In November 2004, during the Second Battle of Fallujah, Washington Post reporters embedded with Task Force 22, Regimental Combat Team 7, wrote on November 9, 2004 that, some artillery guns fired white phosphorus rounds that create a screen of fire that cannot be extinguished with water. Insurgents reported being attacked with a substance that melted their skin, a reaction consistent with white phosphorus burns. On November 9, 2005 the Italian state-run broadcaster Radio Televisione Italiana S.P.A. aired a documentary titled Fallujah, The Hidden Massacre, alleging that the United States used white phosphorus as a weapon in Fallujah causing insurgents and civilians to be killed or injured by chemical burns. The filmmakers further claimed that the United States used incendiary MK-77 bombs in violation of Protocol 3 of the 1980 Convention on Certain Conventional Weapons. According to the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, quoted in the documentary, White phosphorus is permitted for use as an illumination device and as a weapon with regard to heat energy, but not permitted as an offensive weapon with regard to its toxic chemical properties. The documentary also included footage which purported to be of white phosphorus being fired from helicopters over Fallujah. It also quoted journalist Juliana S. Grainer, who had been in Fallujah, as a testimony. On November 15, 2005, U.S. Department of Defense spokesman Lieutenant Colonel Barry Venable confirmed to the BBC that white phosphorus had been used as an incendiary anti-personnel weapon in Fallujah. Venable stated, when you have enemy forces that are in covered positions that your higher explosive artillery rounds are not having an impact on them you wish to get them out of those positions. One technique is to fire a white phosphorus round into the position, because the combined effects of the fire and smoke and in some case the terror brought about by the explosion on the ground will drive them out of the hold so that you can kill them with high explosives. On November 16, 2005, BBC News reported that an article published in the March to April 2005 issue of Field Artillery a U.S. Army magazine noted that white phosphorus had been used during the battle. According to the article written by a captain, a first lieutenant, and a sergeant, W.P. White phosphorus proved to be an effective and versatile munition. We used it for screening missions at two breaches and, later in the fight, as a potent psychological weapon against the insurgents in trench lines and spider holes, where we could not get effects on them with he high explosives. We fired, shake, and bake missions at the insurgents, using WP to flush them out and he to take them out. BBC News noted that the article had been discovered by bloggers after the US ambassador in London, Robert Holmes Tuttle stated that U.S. forces do not use napalm or white phosphorus as weapons. On November 22, 2005, the Iraqi government stated it would investigate the use of white phosphorus in the Battle of Fallujah. On November 30, 2005, General Peter Pace stated that white phosphorus munitions were a legitimate tool of the military used to illuminate targets and create smoke screens, saying, it is not a chemical weapon, it is an incendiary, and it is well within the law of war, to use those weapons as they're being used, for marking and for screening. Israel-Lebanon Conflict 2006 During the 2006 Israel-Lebanon Conflict, Israel said that it had used phosphorus shells against military targets in open ground in South Lebanon. Israel clarified that its use of the white phosphorus bombs was permitted under international conventions. 
president of Lebanon Emile Lahord claimed that phosphorus shells were used against civilians in Lebanon. The first Lebanese official complaint about the use of phosphorus came from Information Minister Ghazi Aradi. Ukraine White Phosphorus Train Disaster On 16 July 2007, a train transporting 15 tanks containing white phosphorus derailed in the LVIV oblast. As a result, 90 square kilometers were contaminated with a cloud of white phosphorus. In the first days, 152 people were hospitalized. The disaster was described as an equivalent to the Chernobyl disaster. 16,000 people were checked for symptoms of chemical poisoning within a wick, and LVIV residents were advised to stay inside and not to use water from wells, nor eat vegetables from their gardens or drink milk from their cows. On 18 July 2007, it was reported that NATO was watching the toxic cloud movement. Gaza War 2008-2009 the International Committee of the Red Cross said it had no evidence white phosphorus was used by Israel illegally. In its early statements, the Israeli military denied using white phosphorus, saying, the IDF acts only in accordance with what is permitted by international law and does not use white phosphorus. It eventually admitted its use and decided to stop using the shells, however, saying that a media buzz led to its decision to do so. Numerous reports from human rights groups during the war indicated that white phosphorus shells were being used by Israel in populated areas. United States-based human rights organization Human Rights Watch said shells exploded overpopulated civilian areas, including a crowded Palestinian refugee camp and a United Nations school where civilians were seeking refuge. Additionally, Human Rights Watch said that white phosphorus injuries were suspected in the cases of 10 burn victims. The International Red Cross stated that phosphorus weapons had been used in the conflict but would not comment publicly on the legality of Israel's use of the weapon. Pending further investigation, contrary to what had been attributed to the ICRC in a number of media reports, Human Rights Watch said its experts in the region had witnessed the use of white phosphorus. Kenneth Roth, the organization's executive director, added, this is a chemical compound that burns structures and burns people. It should not be used in populated areas. Amnesty International said a fact-finding team found indisputable evidence of the widespread use of white phosphorus in crowded civilian residential areas of Gaza City and elsewhere in the territory. Donatella Rivera, the head of an amnesty fact-finding mission to southern Israel and Gaza, said, Israeli forces used white phosphorus and other weapons supplied by the United States to carry out serious violations of international humanitarian law, including war crimes. On 5 January The Times reported that telltale smoke associated with white phosphorus had been seen in areas of a shelling. On 12 January it was reported that more than 50 phosphorus burns victims were in NASA hospital. On 16 January the UNRWA headquarters was hit with phosphorus munitions. As a result of the hit, the compound was set ablaze. Many other observers, including Human Rights Watch military experts, reported seeing white phosphorus airbursts over Gaza City and the Jabalia refugee camp. The BBC published a photograph of two shells exploding over a densely populated area on the 11th of January. Since Protocol 3 of the Convention on Certain Conventional Weapons regulates incendiary weapons, and shells containing white phosphorus may be legal even in populated areas.
More information is required to determine the legality of any shell landing in populated areas. The IDF stated on 13 January that it wishes to reiterate that it uses weapons in compliance with international law, while strictly observing that they be used in accordance with the type of combat and its characteristics. On 14 January, Israeli news sources Haaretz and Inep News reported that a mortar shell containing white phosphorus was fired from Gaza and exploded without damage or injury in an open space in the Eshgol area. The official foreign press spokesman for the Israeli police, Mickey Rosenfeld, stated that the shell had landed in a field near Duro. A day after the attack, a researcher for Human Rights Watch traveled to Duro to investigate the claim. One resident said he had heard about a mortar shell, possibly with white phosphorus, landing in a field outside of town, but could not specify where. When pressed for information, Rosenfeld could give no further insight, telling Human Rights Watch that, all I have is what's in the press release. Local authorities in Duro also told the researcher that they were unaware of the attack. On 15 January, the United Nations compound, housing numerous refugees in Gaza City, was struck by Israeli white phosphorus artillery shells, setting fire to pallets of relief materials and igniting several large fuel storage tanks. A UN spokesperson indicated that there were difficulties in attempting to extinguish the fires because of the white phosphorus and stated, you can't put it, white phosphorus, out. With traditional methods such as fire extinguishers, you need sand. But we do not have any sand in the compound. Senior Israeli defense officials maintain that the shelling using white phosphorus munitions was in response to Israeli military personnel being fired upon by Hamas fighters who were in proximity to the UN headquarters, and was used for smoke. The Israeli army investigated improper use of WP in the conflict, particularly in one incident in which 20 WP shells were fired in a built-up area of Beit Lahia. On 17 January, Peter Herbie, head of the International Committee of the Red Cross Arms Unit, confirmed the use of white phosphorus weapons by Israel in Gaza, outlined the rules applicable to phosphorus weapons and explained the ICRC's approach to the issue. On 20 January, Paul Wood of the BBC reports from Gaza on white phosphorus use in civilian areas. Amnesty team weapon expert Christopher Cobb-Smith, who witnessed the shelling by the IDF, during the conflict, reported, we saw streets and alleyways littered with evidence of the use of white phosphorus, including still burning wedges and the remnants of the shells and canisters fired by the Israeli army. On 26 January, after weeks of fighting in which Israel denied it was using white phosphorus weaponry, the nation's Ministry of Defense admitted using white phosphorus in Gaza. On 25 March 2009, Human Rights Watch published a 71-page report titled Reign of Fire, Israel's Unlawful Use of White Phosphorus in Gaza, and said that Israel's usage of the weapon was illegal. White phosphorus munitions did not kill the most civilians in Gaza, many more died from missiles, bombs, heavy artillery, tank shells, and small arms fire but their use in densely populated neighborhoods, including downtown Gaza City, violated international humanitarian law, which requires taking all feasible precautions to avoid civilian harm and prohibits indiscriminate attacks. The Israeli government released a report in July 2009 that confirmed that the IDF used white phosphorus in both exploding munitions and smoke projectiles. The report acknowledged the use of exploding munitions by Israeli ground and naval forces, 
The report argues that the use of these munitions was limited to unpopulated areas for marking and signaling and not as an anti-personnel weapon. The Israeli government report further stated that smoke screening projectiles were the majority of the munitions containing white phosphorus employed by the IDF, and that these were very effective in that role. The report states that, at no time did IDF forces have the objective of inflicting any harm on the civilian population. Head of the UN fact-finding mission Justice Richard Goldstone presented the report of the mission to the Human Rights Council in Geneva on 29 September 2009, urging the Council and the international community as a whole to put an end to impunity for violations of international law in Israel and the occupied Palestinian territory. The Goldstone Report accepted that white phosphorus is not illegal under international law, but did find that the Israelis were systematically reckless in determining its use in build-up areas. It also called for serious consideration to be given to the banning of its use as an obscurant. Human Rights Watch claimed in its report that instead of white phosphorus, the Israeli military had a non-lethal alternative at its disposal smoke shells produced by Israel military industries. In 2010, Ein Shel Pfeffer of Haaretz claimed that the Israeli report to the UN included a section discussing two senior Israeli officers who were responsible for firing white phosphorus artillery shells on a United Nations compound, and were reprimanded earlier that year. This was later disproved. The officers were reprimanded for permitting artillery shot in that same combat, and Israel continued to claim that its use of phosphorus in that combat was only for smoke. Afghanistan, 2009 there are confirmed cases of white phosphorus burns on bodies of civilians wounded in Afghanistan. U.S. Taliban clashes near Bagram. The United States has accused Taliban militants of using white phosphorus weapons illegally on at least 44 occasions. In May 2009, Colonel Gregory Julian, a spokesman, for General David McKinnon, the overall commander of U.S. and NATO forces in Afghanistan, confirmed that Western military forces in Afghanistan use white phosphorus in order to illuminate targets or as an incendiary to destroy bunkers and enemy equipment. The Afghan government later launched an investigation into the use of white phosphorus munitions used in Yemen 2009. Houthi fighters in Yemen claimed Saudi warplanes dropped phosphorus bombs on villages in North Yemen in November 2009. The Saudi government denied military use of phosphorus munitions against the rebels, saying they were flares, not phosphorus. Armenian-Azerbaijani clashes 2016. After the 2016 Armenian-Azerbaijani clashes, Azerbaijani Ministry of Foreign Affairs stated that on the 10th of May of that year, the Armenian military had fired 122 mm white phosphorus munitions against Azerbaijani territory. Saudi Arabian-led intervention in Yemen 2016. In September 2016, the Washington Post reported that Saudi Arabia appears to be using U.S.-supplied white phosphorus munitions in Yemen, based on images and videos posted to social media. A United States official said the department was looking into whether the Saudis used white phosphorus improperly. Smoke screening properties Wait for wait, phosphorus is the most effective smoke screening agent known. For two reasons, firstly, it absorbs most of the screening mass from the surrounding atmosphere. 
And secondly, the smoke particles are an aerosol, a mist of liquid droplets which are close to the ideal range of sizes for me scattering of visible light. This effect has been likened to three-dimensional textured privacy glass. The smoke cloud does not simply obstruct an image, but thoroughly scrambles both visual and infrared radiation, interfering with infrared optics and weapon tracking systems, serving as a protection for military forces from guided weapons such as anti-tank missiles. When phosphorus burns in air, it first forms diphosphorus pentoxide, P4 plus 5022 P205. Diphosphorus pentoxide is extremely hygroscopic and quickly absorbs even minute traces of moisture to form liquid droplets of phosphoric acid, 2P205 plus 6H204H3PO4 since an atom of phosphorus has an atomic mass of 31, but a molecule of phosphoric acid has a molecular mass of 98. The cloud is already 68% by mass derived from the atmosphere, it may absorb more, because phosphoric acid and its variants are hygroscopic. Given time, the droplets will continue to absorb more water, growing larger and more dilute until they reach equilibrium with the local water vapor pressure. In practice, the droplets quickly reach a range of sizes suitable for scattering visible light and then start to dissipate from wind of convection. Because of the great weight efficiency of white phosphorus smoke, it is particularly suited for applications where weight is highly restricted, such as hand grenades and mortar bombs. An additional advantage for hand smoke grenades, which are more likely to be used in an emergency, is that the WP smoke clouds form in a fraction of a second. Because WP is also pyrophoric, most munitions of this type have a simple burst to charge to split open the casing and spray fragments of WP through the air, where they ignite spontaneously and leave a trail of rapidly thickening smoke behind each particle. The appearance of this cloud forming is easily recognized. One sees a shower of burning particles spraying outward, followed closely by distinctive streamers of white smoke, which rapidly coalesce into a fluffy, very pure white cloud. Various disadvantages of white phosphorus are discussed below but one which is particular to smoke screening is pillaring, because the WP smoke is formed from fairly hot combustion, the gases in the cloud are hot, and tend to rise. Consequently, the smoke screen tends to rise off the ground relatively quickly, and form aerial pillars of smoke which are of little use for screening. Tactically, this may be counteracted by using white phosphorus to get a screen quickly, but then following up with emission-type screening agents for a more persistent screen. Some countries have begun using red phosphorus instead. Red phosphorus burns cooler than WP, and eliminates a few other disadvantages as well, but offers exactly the same weight efficiency. Other approaches include white phosphorus-soaked felt pads and PWP, or plasticized white phosphorus. Thank you for watching. Brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.